Hello, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be covering a trade that was taken on the 28th of May on UK 100. So this trade was taken live within the Discord community. All of my trades are taken live in front of my members and able to follow along and copy the exact same trades. Now, this is not a signal service. If people want to copy the trades that I'm taking, it is at their own risk. However, I am fully transparent and explain every single trade that I'm taking, why I'm taking it, and also the outcome of the trade, whether it is a winning trade or a losing trade. So if you are interested in getting involved in that, tap the link in the bio below. Otherwise, let's get on with this recap. So this particular trade, it was a very clean setup. You can see we took an entry on this fair value gap just here. Our stop loss was on the high of candle one just there. That put us in a comfortable position that if price was going to continue pushing higher up and take out this stop loss, then we were likely going to see price pushing a bit higher. Now, I've mentioned many, many times in the past that so many people really fixate on trying to get the perfect entry, all right? But one thing that a lot of people fail to think about is what their target is going to be. So if you are spending a lot of time trying to get that perfect entry, you need to be spending about as much time as trying to find the perfect entry and actually trying to make sure you've got a good place to target. So let's have a look at where we were targeting for this. So this is something that I always think about before I enter a trade. Do we have an area that is suitable for us to target and is likely to see price drawn towards now if we look over here to the left we did have some liquidity over here we got some you know a bit of a, a trend line liquidity going on there nothing all that significant nothing that's really screaming out that price needs to break this area because uh you know at the end of the day we are on the five minute time frame and these lows they're not all that significant but what we do have below this area which is kind of in encouraging this area to be an inducement level is these fair value gaps below these fair value gaps are what is likely going to draw price back towards this region at some point now just because it's a fair value gap it doesn't mean price is guaranteed to drop to this area so it is important to look for fair value gaps or structural highs and lows or even daily highs and lows that are in a reasonable place so for example, if we was to zoom out and we started looking all the way to the left for like a fair value gap down here, you know, if we're entering a trade somewhere over here in the grand scheme of it, this is not really a suitable target if we're trying to, uh, you know, catch a one to two trade. So ideally, we do want to be looking at what is near current price action in order for us to target and is more likely to hit our TP. So, and that's why we're looking at something like this. Now, if these fair value gaps did not exist, we would not have been in this trade at all. All right, so the target doesn't just have to be a fair value gap. Like I've said in the previous video, we do talk about um, potential targets that we do use, things like structural highs and lows, you know, um, daily highs and lows, session highs and lows as well. But this is something that was really screaming out that because we did have this bearish push, uh, we have these areas that we could target now there is also a sell before the buy candle just here um we could even look at that as an order block and as you can see price did come down to this region mitigate this and also clear out these fair value gaps in the process so let's remove the drawings and let's start looking at the thought process and the you know the the, the checklist we essentially went through in order to get into this trade so let's remove that Let's now um, use the bar replay and we're going to go to the start of the session. So first off, what we can see is this is our window here. We are looking at the eight o'clock until the nine o'clock window. We will only execute a trade inside this window, not before, not after. We will only execute a trade inside the window. Now, if the trade is executed in this window and it runs outside of this window, that's fine. OK, but we cannot open a trade before or after this. This is how we keep things rule based. This is how we make sure that we are minimizing our chart time. We're having specific uh, specific windows where we are then looking for opportunities. So before the session opens, what we're looking at is what has happened you know, overnight, essentially by time we are then getting onto the charts. Now we do have a bit of a gap here. This was from Bank Holiday. As you can see, this prior day here, 
is a Friday, then we get into the next trading day, we then have Tuesday. So UK 100 is obviously closed on UK bank holidays. Um, but then if we just zoom out a little bit, you can see I have marked out this POI. Now this POI, it's not like a very significant point of interest or an order block of that's screaming out, right, this is the best order block to be looking at. It's just an observation point, okay? We're not relying on order blocks or POIs or anything like that to get into our trades. What we are looking at is has price mitigated something and is reacting from it now we can see that the opening candle did open inside this uh, point of interest all right and then we did have a push down so what we're then looking at is as the market is opening what is going on during that open now as we can see here we do have this big spike candle that is open this was just before the london session had actually started so we can see we've had a strong push up and it's rejected very strongly from this area all right just because it's wicked above that doesn't necessarily mean the poi has failed because again we're not trying to find the perfect poi we're just looking at where are the reactions coming from so we've had a reaction from this let's just push forward a couple more candles all right, we then see there's another wick pushing up. We are failing to push higher. So this is showing that there's a lot of rejection coming from this area here. Now we see price eventually starts to push a little bit lower. We've got this next candle um, engulfing, uh, well, not necessarily engulfing, but pushing lower and it's closing below some of these previous candles. And at the moment, at this time, we are still sitting on our hands. We are still waiting for that perfect opportunity. So we then had a fair value gap forming just here. Now, the problem with this fair value gap is straight away, like I said at the beginning, we need to be looking for a suitable target. So we need to then look at how big is the stop loss for this. We're now looking at a 16.5 point stop loss. OK, now we do need to then start looking at the equilibrium of the fair value gap. Now, this is not where we took the trade. All right. If we then drag this down and start looking at where the target would be, we can still see the target is quite suitable. All right. We are still aiming for these lows just here. But at this point, what we could then identify is this candle pushing below this low. Is this going to be a drawn liquidity from the Asia lows or is this going to be a liquidity sweep from this previous low just over here? So we're still going to sit on our hands and just get a little bit more confirmation that price intends to fully um, push below these levels. So let's advance this forward just a little bit more. We could then see we did uh we, we sort of grazed past this liquidity but then we had another fair value gap forming now this is where the problem set in so let's go down to this point we're now looking at this we still need our stop loss at the high of candle one and as you can see that then extends our target much further all right it then extends it you know pretty much deep into this point of interest that we dis uh, discussed earlier on it brings us past these fair value gaps so this is not really ideal to be getting involved in so at this point, we are simply sitting on our hands, waiting until something better sets up. So advance forward a little bit more. We can see this fair value gap was mitigated. Now, at this point, a lot of people will be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm going to miss this trade. I need to get into it. But in situations like this, stay patient. OK, the target was not ideal. Then we can see a, another fair value gap has formed. And this is where we started to get a little bit more interested in what was happening. So let's size this up. We can see that this fair value gap is below our minimum. If you're unsure what the maximum and minimum stop loss uh, or fair value gap sizes are, please go to the previous video, have a watch of that, and then come back to this one. So let's zoom out. Let's then start looking at where is this target. So this target, we're only aiming for a one to two, nothing more, nothing less. We're not trying to squeeze every single pip out of the market. All right. We are just keeping things conservative and stress free. So what we can see is we are looking at these lows here where these liquidity points are. And we've also got this, uh, you know, this line of liquidity there. But the main driving force for this trade idea is going to be these fair value gaps and this point of interest that we've got here. So this is the absolute most extreme where I'll be interested in. So if another fair value gap sets up here, I would not want to be targeting any further than this. If the target is further than this and there's not much reason for our target to be met, simply the trade is invalid. All right. So like I said at the beginning, we want to put as much emphasis on the exit of our trade as we do the entry. So from here, this is where we would then have the limit order set. OK, next candle. As you can see, we were triggered in. 
uh, quite deeply into this area. All right, we're not trying to get a very tight stop loss. We want to keep things conservative. We're not trying to, you know, uh, <laughs> crazy Instagram trades out there. We're keeping things realistic. We're keeping things sensible here. All right. We can then see we did push in a little bit closer um, to the stop loss, but we're still in a safe place. Price has then pushed down into profit for a little period of time here. We've started to see a bit of a bearish run at this point. We are slowly chipping away at these liquidity points, as you can see here. So let's keep advancing this forwards. What we can then see is price was coming close to our take profit. Now, I get this question so many times. If price comes to down to a level like this, would you get stop loss to break even? And this particular trade is a prime example as to why we do not get stop loss to break even when we get this close to TP. So let's keep advancing forwards. We can then see we do enter a little bit of drawdown. OK, price has pushed into our entry level. And we do sit in a little bit of drawdown for a few minutes. And from here, price just continues, um, you know, sitting around this kind of level, coming back in and out of our entry area. But at this point, we just need to let the trade breathe. Now, as you can see, we're starting to see price pushing a lot lower. And then eventually we can see the take profit was then hit. So this trade, we was in this for, uh, what, about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. It's a very stress-free approach. If you were sitting there watching this trade, you're probably going to find it very stressful. All right, and that goes with any strategy that you are trading. The whole point of having just a one to two fixed risk reward ratio, nothing more, nothing less, is so we do not need to sit there, stare at our charts, try to monitor our trades. There's going to be one of two outcomes with this trade setup. It's either going to hit stop loss or it's going to hit take profit. And we need to accept that before we enter the trade. If you do not accept that and you're sitting there staring at the chart, you're going to start looking at reasons for exiting a potentially profitable trade. Now, I've gathered a lot of data for this strategy roughly close to five years worth of data using FX replay. And I have scrutinized every single one of those trades that when we see price coming down to somewhere around this level here, and we're coming back to our entry, how many times do we see price come up to our entry, hit stop loss, or how many times do we see price come up to our entry and still hit take profit? Now this is still the more likely outcome and if we was going to set stops to break even prematurely, it's going to really severely damage the win rate of the DRS strategy. So I strongly advise or strongly recommend that you backtest this, gather some data and get acquainted with how the strategy really works. And you will start to notice that there's no reason when price comes down here, there is absolutely no reason for us to get stops to break even because we would then miss out on this profitable trade. And the amount of times this scenario happens where we see price come back to here and then on to our take profit happens more often than price goes on to our stop loss. Now, it doesn't mean this is a guarantee that we're always going to hit take profit when price comes back to our break even. But all it means is we don't need to sit there staring at the charts, potentially talking ourselves out of that trade and then missing out on these opportunities where we do manage to bank a one to two. So as you can see here, this is the trading journal so far for May. We're only looking at targeting one to twos. The reason this one here is at 1.2 is because this was closed manually at nine o'clock at night at that daily rollover threshold. So this is the only time we close trade manually is at nine o'clock UK time. And the only time we get stop was to break even, like we've said in the previous video, is after six o'clock at night UK time as well. That's the only time we would do any kind of trade management whatsoever. Unless you are trading with a prop firm that does have rules against trading, like FTMO, for example, if your take profit was hit during a news event, then you will end up violating that account. So that may be in a situation where you would need to monitor a trade around those red folder news events. Other than that, we'd leave the trade alone. We'd let it do its thing. But as you can see, these one to twos, they add up eventually. Okay, just for May, we can see we're sitting at 10.2%. Now, there is a handful of losses here. We took three losses in a row here. We took a loss over here. I also took a loss this morning as I'm recording this, but we're still sitting in a comfortable profit. And as you can see, 10.2%, this will pass most prop firm challenges. 
Now, we don't need to try and fixate on getting this 10% gain or 8% gain to pass a prop firm challenge in that one trade because, yes, it may be possible to do that from time to time, but it's not a sustainable approach. If you're looking for consistency and longevity within your trading, you need to keep things rule-based, you need to keep things consistent, and you also need to manage your greed and your emotions. So just sticking to something like a one to two is more than enough to sustain being a profitable trader. So hopefully you found this useful. If you have any questions regarding the DRS, feel free to drop a comment below. I am much more active on Instagram, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram as well. But for now, trade safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.